Welcome, <clears throat> welcome everyone. Welcome to the Dynamic Show. And super glad to have you here every Thursday at 10 a.m. in Malaysia. We talk with leaders all across the world and we talk about leadership development and we talk about great stuff. We talk about productivity. And today we've got a fabulous guest with us. Lynn Kazali is joining us uh, today. Lynn, welcome to the show. Really happy Hi. to have you with us. Um, and where Hi. are you, Lynn? Where, where, where are you at this point in time? I'm in Melbourne in Australia. So there you go, all the way from Melbourne in Australia. And I think uh, mm. a couple of weeks ago, Brisbane won the bid for the 2032 Olympics. And uh, so yes. we've, uh, we're excited uh, Australians everywhere in uh, about 11 years or so. <laughs> we'll have another Olympics there. Hopefully it'll be a, it'll be a COVID free Olympics this time. <laughs> That's right. Um, Come on down. Come on down. Yeah. So, so then tell us a bit about yourself. I mean, tell us a bit about, you know, how you got to where you got to and, uh, you know, your author of eight books, uh, eight fabulous books I was just browsing through them I mean the titles are just astonishing ish and are and, uh, and agile ish uh, and visual mojo I mean I, I just love that right so tell us how you got to this space and how you became an author how you became a productivity specialist I mean tell us a bit about yourself yeah I think my background has been as a communication specialist so uh, some of my early jobs were working with lots of words so kind of doesn't surprise me that I'm still working with words but I did things like public relations and marketing and leadership roles. And I worked in many different sectors like public health, sport, the arts, uh, government, training and education. So it, they were my job, job roles. And I also uh, spent some time as a lecturer, part-time lecturer at university. So you would have to make sure you learned what you were going to be lecturing on, um, which gave me an incredible uh, insight to the world of communications and how humans think and how we engage and connect with each other. And for the last uh, 10 or so, 15 years, I've been running my own business where I speak and train and facilitate. So uh, I love having the opportunity to, to work with groups and teams, whether that was pre-COVID in face-to-face -face world and increasingly online, of course. Uh, but sprinkled in between those sorts of roles, I had a, a great volunteer interest in broadcasting. And so I uh, did and some that, uh, public broadcasting. <laughs> yeah, it was. Radio, uh, right? Ra from, radio work. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, radio work. I went from being a listener and a subscriber. And then they said, hey, if you anybody listening, you want to join, do our training program. Uh, that's what I did. And so uh, three PBS here in Melbourne, I was a, a presenter on that program, uh, on that station for a number of years, interviewing bands and going and seeing live music and uh, producing shows and uh, putting together information. And so it's, it's, it's like now coming together of all of the skills, even if that's not what I had planned for my career. It's, it's funny how the skills that you're uh, gaining along the way help you do other things. So, so it looks like a number of people are joining us. I think your big fan uh, is Isudin uh, from. Uh, I, I'm not sure where Isudin is from, but but he's he's screaming out your name, <laughs> Lynn Kazali. <laughs> Lynn Kazali. <laughs> there you go. And so we have her in the show in the, in the house today. Lynn Kazali is joining us. Uh, author, uh, multi award winning author, and also uh, looks like a radio show uh, host. Uh, so, you know, I guess it's a great opportunity. Um, and, and, you know, I, I guess, you know, you were introduced to us um, uh, by, by a couple of folks, and, and they, they kind of termed you as a productivity specialist. Um, is that how you see yourself also at this point in time? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a way that people understand what I do and that uh, the way I'm using a lot of their, there are a lot of agile and new ways of working. And I've been working with those with organisations for a number of years. And so I've been able to uh, morph those and adapt them and find ways for us to be more efficient for ourselves, you know, for our own pressure and stress and sanity, and then also to be a, a good, productive, collaborative member of a team. Uh, and then to go on, of course, do that as a leader. Fantastic. And, and, you know, if, if you were to give someone, you know, just random, like, you know, uh, mm. a bu bunch of people, it's like, you know, this is the most important productivity tip. Uh, mm. if, you, if you could distill it to one, right? <laughs> what, what, what would that tip be? And uh, would you be able to share with us at this point in time? Yes. 
Yes, happy to share it. And it wouldn't just be my tip, but of all of the productivity tips, a lot of the research says the best thing that you can do to make yourself more productive is set a time box. So I'm forever saying, hey, Siri, set a timer for 25 minutes and then I will work uninterrupted for 25 minutes. Really try and focus, get some momentum. Don't switch and do anything else. Focus on that task. And then when the alarm goes off, you know, get up, give yourself a high five, have a reward, have a stretch, get a cup of tea and um, let your brain take a little bit of a break. So time boxing uh, and not hours and hours, minutes and minutes is enough. 15, 25 minutes is enough to get some momentum and make progress on some things. Mm. So, so you recommend in, in, in uh, increments of minutes like 25, 30, is that the optimal level of? Uh... Yes. Uh, yeah, endurance so, we have <laughs> <laughs> maybe focus you know that it's, focus, a, okay. it's a, a nice balance it's not so little time that we can't get some good thinking done but it's also not so much time uh too hot too cold just right it's not so much time that we lose you know lose energy or lose interest for the ta task and then of course we do get distracted oh look a kitten you know oh what's happening is because we're getting you know, we're getting a little bit bored with that task. Fantastic, and and you know the the the, the you know audiences are joining in. Anita says hi to you, Lynn, um, and hi, Anita. Anita says really cool. Uh, and I think your tip very clever. You know, it's a uh, uh, set the time box so clever. You know, uh, and, <laughs> and that is really really a good tip. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, so and I, I see you know Anita and Anita joins the fun and says yep. Time box got it. We'd love to try it. So well done, everyone. And Anil, welcome to the show. See, good to see you also. Uh, good to see you guys again in the show and loving the conversation. Uh, and and uh, uh, it's a doggy. Uh, this one. Uh, <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> anyway, uh, Lynn, you know it's it's uh, you know let, let's talk a little bit about book. I mean, you've written eight books. Um, and and I think the latest is uh, the book called Ah. You know, I, I I assume you're screaming. Ah, too much information, not enough brain. <laughs> you know that. Tell us a bit about, uh, you know, and, and maybe we can zoom in on some of the other books, but, but you know, this that's your latest book. That's a book that's out there and um, um, it's a practical guide to outsmarting overwhelm. And I think that's that's probably something that a lot of people feel at this point in time, even though it's a lot of work from home, a lot of um, lockdowns, and, and uh, but that they seem to be, you know, even uh, a bigger sense or a more heightened sense of overwhelm and, 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 uh, yes. um, and almost um, uh, helplessness at, you know, at, at points in time. Yes. Uh, yes. So t t talk us a bit about that, that book and what 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 does that book tell us? And maybe you can share one or two mm. insights. And, and mm. obviously, everyone, you can get your copy of the book uh, at lincasley.com.au. Uh, there you can and scream your way out. Wow. Is, that, is, that, is, that, is that one of the tips? Is that one of the tips to release the, <laughs> the, 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 the sense of hopelessness um, and despair? <laughs> talk us through that. Sorry, Lynn, go ahead. <laughs> Not in my book, I don't say, but I was listening to Louise Hay, you know, wonderful uh, author herself uh, in her time, and she was talking about, you know, screaming into a pillow and, and punching the bed when, when we get angry and, and get into that state. But I hope you don't quite get to that state. So in the book, Arg, I talk about uh, overwhelm, that we can, that feeling of rising emotions, and who hasn't felt that over the last year? You know, we've really been put in some difficult situations in our lives, with our work, with our friends and family, that it's natural for us to feel these, these emotions. I love the work of Dr. Susan David uh, and her book, Emotional Agility, and any of her articles, even any of her tweets are fantastic uh, nuggets for helping us you know, deal with our emotions. So I think ARG is that overwhelm is really the, the book and my thinking around it is to, instead of just saying I'm overwhelmed or I'm overloaded or I can't cope, is to really try and zoom in on what do you think the thing is that's overwhelming you the most? And I divide it up into three things. One is emotions. If we can uh, affirm or understand or validate our emotions first, then deal with the work we've got to do and then deal with the information we might be needing to read or take in. But unfortunately, we get all of it mixed up and we say, I'm overwhelmed emotionally, you know, with our workload and with information, and it just becomes a big, oh! So <laughs> separating those out, I think, helps us 
you know, get greater control over ourselves. And then we can focus on, all right, well, how might I organise my work so that I can do it in ways that doesn't overwhelm me? And then when I need to read information, watch presentations, listen to podcasts, when I need to take in information, I want to do that when I'm feeling ready, you know, ready to be able to take in and absorb that, not when I'm already feeling full and overflowing. That's great. Um, you know, if you if you look at uh, and 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 you know, welcome to a couple more people that I think are joining us. You know, Nara, welcome. Uh, uh, hearty greetings to you too, um, and 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 a couple others that are, that are joining us. Great, great to have you here. Um, you know, quick question from uh, uh, Izudin uh, uh, is also the title for my final. Oh, this is a comment. Uh, title for my final year project. So there you go, Lynn. It's uh, that's good. It's, it, it's well, infectious. It's infectious yeah, it's, what you're doing. <laughs> it's actually a word and um, it's it's a word. It's an exclamation. It means it's used as an expression of anguish, horror, rage or other strong emotion, often with humorous intent. But it's usually uh, used to express frustration or disappointment or anguish or pain. And it's from the 18th century. So it's not a new word, but maybe we can have more R's depending on oh, how uh, difficult we're finding things. Maybe it's A R R R R R R G H. So, you know, Lynn, you know, I, I guess in a previous life, which was pre COVID, mm. you know, uh, you did lots of cool stuff like, you know, a whole bunch mm. of keynotes and, uh, you know, I, I, we managed to capture some of your photographs. Uh, and, and you speak quite a bit on a variety mm. of topics and variety of angles. And, you know, if you look at um, the, the things that you speak about, you know, what, what, what is, what is, the thing that you feel uh, most of us, um, especially at the professional working level, lack maybe, and and the advice that you would impart the most. I mean, which, which you found the most impactful. I mean, maybe, maybe you can share, you know, what that advice would be, uh, and and mm. why you think that would be so impactful. Yeah, I think. Well, I gave a, a keynote this morning uh, online to uh, a group of school leaders, um, large regional school, and I was talking to them about new ways of working. Uh, so, of course, the buzzwords around, oh, we have to be agile. But if you explore more about these new ways of working, that we might be dividing up our work differently or we might be working differently with people and working from home or working remotely is only one of maybe 50, 60 different techniques that we can use to work in different ways. So I'd love, uh, and I do love when I'm speaking, is to get people to think about maybe there's another way that I could be doing this task. Maybe there's another way that would be less draining on me, that would make the task easier to complete, that will make me feel better at the end of the day and less uh, stressed, less like a zombie. And those new and better ways of working are you know, well-practiced, well-researched and documented. We don't have to adopt them all at once, but maybe if we just took a couple of them on and time boxing is one of them, which we talked about earlier. So that's one of the key messages I like people to think about is what are these new ways of working that many companies are adopting? How might I be able to adopt them in my world individually? I don't have to wait for someone to tell me I could start working in new ways. And then how might I work in newer ways with my team or my community group or you know any other uh, roles and responsibilities that I hold so that's a key message that I talk about often fantastic and and and, and to, to is it in it's an eye-opener um, oh good uh, so, so he thanks he thanks you for that you know and and and, and I think for, for any of you guys you know if you have any questions for Lynn please shoot them in the comment section and we will be happy to uh uh, grab those questions and I will butt in uh, while she's speaking halfway and say, hey, answer this question, takes priority over what you, you, you're saying. But, you know, we'll, we'll try and uh, uh, answer as many questions as possible. And 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 then, you know, I want to, you know, you you know you talked about overwhelm um, quite a bit just now, you know, in the book, especially in the book, all right, um, you know, how do you, uh, but how do you make sense of it? How do you know that you're overwhelmed? Because that's that's sometimes an issue, right, um, of, of mm. knowing uh, before you can cure it or before you can resolve it uh, uh, somewhat, right? Um, how does yeah. one know that they are overwhelmed? Well, a number of ways you might feel it in your body. So you might be uh, agitated or anxious or you might feel tears or anger rising. But also people find 
uh, overwhelm affects them in, in ways like waking up at 3 a.m. with all of these thoughts running through your mind uh, or thinking and dreaming about work, uh, that could be something, or struggling to get to sleep, uh, deferring to things like too much alcohol, bad food, too much binge watching TV. Some of these are coping mechanisms to, to help uh, deal, I guess, with the, the thing that is overloading or overwhelming us. So I think we can say that we probably are overwhelmed somewhere with something uh, and the technique of sense making or making sense is what I go through in the book. So I'm happy to talk some more about that today, that if we stop and make sense of the overwhelm, that's how we get smarter than it, rather than it, it coming and shocking us or uh, us being, you know, angry or our emotions really, you know, coming on quickly, maybe we can go, oh, hang on, I'm smarter. I'm smarter than my my overwhelm if I can understand it a bit better rather than fighting. I think we've been fighting, wrestling, containing, controlling. It's all been quite aggressive, whereas sense-making is a little bit more, okay, what's going on here and what do I need to do about it? They're okay. two really good questions. You could write yeah, those yeah. down. Yeah. What's and, and, going you know, on I, and what do I need to do about it? What's going on and what's what you and Aaron Aaron sort mm. of uh, says, yeah, I, I perceive I'm not sure when people ask me if I'm overwhelmed. And I think yeah. um, it is uh, it is uh, you know, like like you said, I mean, uh, those are two good questions for us to ask. Um and overwhelm sometimes, you know, translates at some point in time to burnout. Um and yes. um, in, and, and, you know, is there, is there any practical ways to resolve burnout or to overcome or avoid burnout mm. to some extent? Yeah, there was a really good edition of the Harvard Business Review recently uh, devoted to burnout. So so explore some more of, of the topic there because they identified some of the key things that lead to burnout, which includes one of them is an, an unmanageable workload. So you might not feel overwhelmed, but you might constantly have this to-do list that you never get through or this endless amount of tasks. And having that situation prolonged for a long time is one of the things that leads to um, burnout. But there are also some other interesting ones. One of them was not being recognised for the effort that you've put in. So imagine you've got a heavy workload, you've not been recognised. These are two of the top things that can cause uh, burnout and then not having that time to sort of pause and celebrate or recognise when you've when you've finished a project. Often we lurch from one thing into the next into the next and there's no real stop or pause. So this it's this ongoing stress. It's usually created via the culture of a workplace uh, and there are things we can do, which is get on, get on top of our emotions, manage our or re reimagine and redesign it, the workload we've got and then worry about dealing with the information we need to take in later yeah and i think the point you make about recognition is very uh, pertinent you know i think mm. as as leaders sometimes of organizations we sometimes you know in the busyness of executing and getting things done we forget about celebration and recognition just taking that time to uh, kind of thank and be grateful to uh, employees and uh, and, and the folks that are putting in your shift to make all these great things happen mm. in the organization. You know? so, and, and you're right, because it, that that recognition gives you the fuel to be able to power you on for the next level of the next, or the next arduous task that's ahead of us, or the next 25 <laughs> minutes of yeah. time boxing that needs to happen, right? <laughs> uh, that's right, and, and, that's right. And, and you know, so so you know that there is a you know couple more couple more questions. Uh, I, I think um, there is uh, from Izudin. He's asking, you know, what what would be some um, ways to get our managers to understand this concept of our employees to understand this concept of time boxing. Um, mm. Your your thoughts, Lynn? Yeah, you can start doing it. So uh, you can be if you can be uninterrupted for twenty five minutes. Um, if you can s slot those into your diary, so rather than thinking you're you're going to get opportunities for time boxing, um, to put them into your diary, even in half an hour, 25 minute slots, and then when it comes to say a meeting with your team or a meeting with your manager, you could you could report on, hey, I'm trying a new thing this week. Mm. I've been time boxing. I've been setting a timer. Uh, and the research around it says it is the most, you know, powerful productivity tool. 
to allocate time and and focus during that time and then let them know the results. Uh, let them say, you know, you might be saying, hey, I feel a lot more in control this week. I've been getting more done and I'm in, I'm in a better state at the end of the week rather than exhausted and uh, overwhelmed. So you start, try it out and, uh, and let others know that um, you're trying it and the results that you're having. Fabulous. And, you know, Ida, Ida, welcome to the show. You know, you're glad to have you every Thursday joining us. Um, so Ida's one of our loyal fans. Uh, that, that's that's there. You know, I want to zoom in a little bit more on, on the OLM fee piece. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, uh, so we, we've kind of, we kind of understood how we can understand when we're in a situation where we're, where, where we are in overwhelm. Um, but then let's talk a little bit about what we can do about it, right? Uh, so what else, uh, you know, would be practical ways for us to overcome this feeling of overwhelm or this, the, mm. maybe it's not just a feeling, right? The actual uh, issue of being overwhelmed. You know? mm. Yeah, and I guess we should say, look, it's not always a bad thing. We, the overwhelm of emotions can be a, the most wonderful thing. You know, we have pride and joy and excitement and wonderful experiences of that flood of emotions that's, that's so powerful, you know, those peak moments as they're often called. Um, so it's the less productive or less positive effects of overwhelm that we want to not, not squash down. We want to acknowledge them um, because they do give us insights to what's going on. So my view is that it could be indicating that something is a bit out of balance. So if you're getting overwhelmed with something, maybe you're trying to do too much in the time that's available or you're expecting too much of yourself. So our own expectations can be huge contributors to our experience of overwhelm. We were expecting to get something done. We get overwhelmed. We didn't get it done. And then we're overwhelmed with disappointment about how we didn't get it done. Uh, so if we can set some more realistic times for how long we think something's going to take, so estimates, estimate, not perfect, but it at least helps us see what do I need to do and how long might it take me. So I had to finish writing an article last night and I knew it was going to take a while. Could I work endlessly? No, not productive. So I kept setting 25 minute timers on my phone. I did two, then I went and had a break, had a drink, came back, did another two, article finished, stood up, went and had my proper break for the end of the day. So what I was doing was keeping overwhelm at bay, not squashing it down when it came, but I was doing preemptive, preventative measures by monitoring or managing my attention and my energy and not continuing to push on until we're exhausted. That's when overwhelm can come. Fantastic. No, I think those are really, really fantastic tips. And uh, and uh, uh, Abdul Shukur, welcome. Uh, greetings. Uh, he says bonjour from Singapore. So welcome from ah. Singapore. And uh, and uh, so we've got uh, folks from all over. And you know, um, and and I think Zudin adds, hope all the managers can be like Lynn. Hearing this, oh. I feel so motivated to the to to the environment like that. You know, there you go. <laughs> ah, no, no more R. Maybe you have to change. Wow. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta you got, you got a book for every season, right, Lynn? <laughs> I have. 100%. Um, and, and, and thanks thanks for your comments. And, you know, for, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to uh, shoot the questions. We're going to take a, a, a short break. And one of the things I think that Lynn talked a little bit about just now was about recognition. Um, and I think one for, for me, at least, you know, one of the most powerful tools I've used uh, in our organization to recognize people and to enable employees to recognize each other. I think that's even more powerful, right? Not just managers recognizing the employee, but employees recognizing each other uh, is, is this fantastic tool called Happily. So let's take this 30 second break and uh, have a look at Happily, uh, this powerful engagement tool um, and also uh, employee intelligence tool. So let's take a quick break. We'll be right back with the Thinkonomics challenge, something that Lynn has to go through. Everyone on the Leader Show goes through that. Uh, we'll see whether she passes with flying colors, let's see. So with that, happily.
economic show with Lynn Kesley. And uh, for those of you who want to check it out, budaya.app. Budaya is uh, also uh, available in Basa, Indonesia for the Indonesians. Uh, happily uh, in Indonesia. Uh, Lynn, before we get to the economic challenge, we have a question from Tiru, uh, who has, uh, Tiru Kesson, who's who asked this question. How would we explain the emotion of overwhelm to children, say a teenager, and what kind of tips can we offer them uh, to overcome this? Mm. Well, the, the explanation of overwhelm, we, we often see floods, you know, da uh, the rivers rising and the, bra uh, the banks of the river breaking. Uh, and that's where that the word of overwhelm comes from is that something is you know, it could be submerged or is overcome you know rapidly or dramatically so it could help to talk in terms of a metaphor or analogy like that that uh like go to the sink in the kitchen and show the cup filling up with water do you where do you feel the water is in you and then to watch as the cup overflows do you feel like that is there too much for what you can you know carry could be one way. Uh, and some tips to overcome. I've been working with a number of teenagers with ARG, the book, and guess what? Time boxing. Instead of slaving away with homework for hours and hours, short uh, periods of time where they're focusing and then time where they can release that pressure of the constraint and kind of recover from that focus. But also the other major tip when we multitask or multi-screen, so if we're trying to work on an assignment or some study and we check social media or we check what our friends are doing, it starts to reduce our IQ, shocking, I know, reduces our IQ and makes the overwhelm uh, rise a bit more. So if you can focus uninterrupted and use one screen or one source of information at a time, that has been shown in the research to have an effect to start to lower that, uh, that lower that rising overwhelm. I love that. I love that analogy. Um, so, so you could yeah, sip on, take, take that, take that cup and uh, fill it yeah. up, and uh, and uh, there you go. <laughs> you're 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 removing the whole um, right there by by drinking <laughs> off some, right? Um, so we we we're gonna go to the economics challenge. We still got a couple of mm -hmm. questions from from different folks, but I think I'm going to uh, jump right into the challenge. So the economic challenge, Lynn, it's a uh, five quick questions based on the values of our, our organization, so it's relationship, empowerment, building the future, uh, and, and, and a couple of others. And you'll have to answer as quick as possible uh, what your thoughts are. So let's get ready for the Thinkonomics Challenge. Here we have it, the Thinkonomics Challenge. So I'm going to shoot you uh, a couple of questions. and you have to shoot them as fast as you can, right? So we'll try and do this all in about under two minutes, all the five questions, right? So maybe about 30 seconds or less uh, for each each answer. So Lynn, what is the best gift you have ever received? Time. I think somebody giving me their time, every time they do that, that is a very precious gift because then whoosh, it's gone. I love that time is it is the most precious commodity huh, out there. Uh, it's nothing. It's not something we can buy, right? So now, do you agree with this proverb? Uh, and the second question: It takes money to make money. Why? No, I disagree with that. I think it takes ingenuity to make money. So if you can use the smarts and the resources you already have and use them creatively, you don't necessarily need money to make money. All right, and and here's something uh, that happened. Uh, if you watch uh, Disney uh, Plus, I think this happened to uh, Vision and uh, uh, I can't remember who Wanda. Right? <laughs> if you are trapped in a TV show for a month, which show would you choose? I'm a big fan of the Jane Austen period dramas, so I wouldn't mind going back in time and seeing how <laughs> how things were. I might get quite tired of it but uh, i'm very curious i would love to find out what it was really like there you go so maybe we have to build a time machine and get you there huh? yeah um, to that era now question number four and you're, you're doing well uh, lynn you're almost there if you have a chance to empower a certain community which one would it uh, I hope that I am and continue to empower a lot of women to um, express their thoughts and their ideas. So instead of keeping them quiet and only speaking when they're spoken to, I hope that they are seeing that, yes, you can write, you can blog, you can speak, you can put your ideas out there. 
<laughs> Fabulous. Uh, so it's the women's community, and um, you know, we, we got to get you uh, up and running to inspire more and to enable more and to uh, encourage more, right? So final question for the Thinkonomics Challenge. What is wrong with the world today? <laughs> and, mm. and, 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 what, and what should we do to fix it or how should we fix it, right? It's a simple question. I mean, I'm sure you can answer that in 10 seconds, right? <laughs> Status, I think, is what's wrong, that there are some people who put themselves higher than others and play that power, and some people who put themselves below others and feel victim to that power. So status, I think, is wrong with it. And if we could think of ourselves more like this, more, uh, more start with equality. All right. And I, I like that. I like that. So here you go. You have just won yourself a leadership nugget uh, and uh, yes. and you'll be getting that copy of that book uh, 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 out to you. Yes, yes, yes. There you go. You're all ready for this. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, you know, quick, quick, uh, quick comments from from uh, Thiru who says thank you for the nice analogy. Uh, and, and Anita Lawrence uh, adds, um, yes, that's why I reduce multitasking after reading one thing by Gary Keller. Next plan, focus more on time box. There you go. So you're, you're, you're already inspiring women and men and, and everybody all around the world to, uh, go to time box, <laughs> to become more productive, uh, to enable more to happen. So with that, Lynn, you get, you, you've, you've just mastered the Thinkonomics Challenge. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so, so let's, let's, uh, you know, I want to zoom back, uh, to, to ARG and to that book, um, and, and, and maybe a bit on overwhelm. Um, and I want to, I want to, you know, zoom into um, this whole concept. Is there anything good to be taken away from feeling overwhelmed or is it all mm. bad? Mm. No, no, it's not all bad. And I mentioned about we can have good overwhelm as well. But when we have some of the overwhelm that's less helpful, I think we can apply this technique, which is called sense making. We have an ability naturally as we grow up to look at things and connect the dots or plot trends but we can also build stronger skills in sense-making. It's a little like the CSI shows, you know, they have a, an information board with, with photos of the you know, culprit and the victim and connecting all of the dots. We do this all day. If we can apply sense-making to our overwhelm, we become more powerful than it. So instead of being victim to overwhelm, we start to outsmart it. So if we can ask these two questions for sense making, which is what is going on and what do I need to do about it? And spending some time looking at overwhelm and I mean literally looking at it. So get a notepad out and start to write down or create a bit of a map of what's going on. This helps us get greater power over it. We make sense of it. And particularly because the information is now out of our head and on a page, we're able to get some distance or perspective. And that is very powerful rather than it all running around in our head. So the good part of overwhelm is it's trying to tell us something. Remember, the balance could be out. If we can make sense of it, get it, get the information that's troubling you out of your head, get some distance and perspective. What's going on? What do I need to do about it? Maybe I don't need to do anything, just seeing it has made me aware of it. But maybe I need to try doing this, try doing that, put in place some solutions that we, we can often think of once we get that perspective. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. You know, and, and there's a quick question on how do you cope with like um, uh, additional work or overload of work uh, at, with, with really stringent deadlines or with very close deadlines? That's a, that's a quick question from the audience. Yep, ah, I see that. Get a post-it note, write on it. Every single task gets its own post-it note. So this is, you know, from the, the personal Kanban work, uh, the book, Jim Benson's, the, um, you know, scrum approaches of working in agile ways. Instead of having a list that even looking at the list can bring on overwhelm is if you have all of your tasks written on individual post-it notes uh, they're much easier for us to look at focus on and tick off the thing is though you've still got to make all of that work that's just come in to make it kind of thin enough that you can get it done so see if you can make the task like bread thin enough that you could get it done in 25 minutes if, if it says write book like that, that's that could be eight months solid work. But if it says uh, draft 
chapter structure, maybe I could do that in 25 minutes. That would be a good task. So if you are lumbered with, with uh, overloading amount of work, write all the tasks down on separate post-its as it's starting. Get it out of your head. And, and uh, you know, I see, I see some comments coming. Lynn is so brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> and then uh, another comment, Renita. Wow, makes sense making. Now I understand why I'm able to manage all of them. It doesn't have a negative impact on me. Um, uh, thanks, right. thanks, Lynn. So, you know, a lot of, lot of uh, uh, great insights, you know. And, and, and then I want to zoom in on your life also a little bit because, you know, one of the things I look at quite a bit is crucible moments and uh, mm -hmm. you know dif different people have different crucible moments in their life and uh, you know some of it you know like I said it's negative things that happen but it, it sparks out uh, a positive reactions and it sparks out uh, uh, the pathway to success to some some to some sense you know were, were there any crucible moments in your life and and did they help you uh, to get to this point of of where you are today Mm, I think there were two that, that come up for me. One of them, and hello to the people in Singapore. I lived in Singapore for a couple of years and went to uh, United World College uh, when I was at high school. So I had this incredible experience of being exposed to so many cultures in a country that was undergoing incredible, you know, growth and expansion. So I had uh, a wonderful, you know, exposure to, wow, look, things can change and there are many different cultures. So I think I've had that. And then when I was working in jobs, I think I could hit up against a kind of brick wall where the job was very difficult, the people weren't very nice, and I really didn't like what I was doing. And I kept persisting. And then one day I said, I don't have to keep doing this. I don't have to keep doing this. I can do something else. There is greater diversity out there for me to pursue. So I left that job, didn't have one to go to, oh, but very quickly found little pieces of work of consulting that started my uh, you know, career of, I guess, working for myself. So I think there were some early crucible um, moments living overseas and living in Singapore and my family, my mum, dad and my brother and I refer back to this time so much. It had such an impact on me. And then making the shift from a paid job to hunting and gathering for yourself that's you know that was a really pivotal moment in my life yeah that's that's a that's a, that's a great story and you know uh, if you have not uh, checked out leadermix.com uh, it's a site where you have tons of uh, write-ups i mean there is a uh, simon sinek jack welsh but I highly recommend five techniques to outsmart being overwhelmed at work by Lynn Gasly. And, and that's, that, that article is out there. Uh, so go check that article out uh, on theramix.com. And there's, there's tons, right? I mean, I, I, you know, I was just browsing through this. Uh, 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 Inset professor uh, Alan Miron wrote, writes uh, Overwhelmed, Adopt a Paradox Mindset. Uh, there's the hot on effect uh, by Kieran, our, our editor. Uh, there's also Judith Fun, and for those who don't, know Judith Fun, a uh, good friend of ours. Uh, the the best thing to do if you're stuck, oh well, or numb. And Judith Fun just wrote a new book, uh, One Minute to Think. Uh, and uh, so 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 there, there's uh, some some great articles out there that you can check. Um, and of course, there are so many great Leronomix shows out there. So I, I you know I, I I recall a couple of uh, great interviews with. Uh, Pierre Luigi Colina, who's a, one of the most fierce referees, and and he talked about you know sometimes in the middle of a game you know feeling overwhelmed with with so much issues and supporters and everyone screaming and players uh, and how you can overwhelm. So you know very quick, uh, let me just show you a quick montage of some of the shows, Roma Kiyosaki and others that you can catch on the Lee Ramik show. So, you know, catch catch all that on YouTube or you can go to leadermix.com and, and be able to catch all of that. And most of the articles that we posted it out on social media, you just have to click it and you're able to check out, especially don't miss out uh, Lynn's article uh, that is there. And Lynn, maybe you should write much more uh, and we'll have that all posted out on, on leadermix.com. You know, Lynn, as we, as we wrap up uh, today um, and, uh, you know, I, I'd like to just kind of get your advice. Uh, if you could leave one nugget of wisdom a one uh, sort of word of advice for all our viewers out there. Um, what would be the most um, you know, uh, significant piece of advice that you can leave us with at this point in time? Mm, um, three words, than you think, than you think. It's better than you think. 
you're better than you think. It's easier than you think. So the way that you are thinking can be changed and by changing that could make things a lot easier for you. I like that. And, you know, we're just, just, just to wrap up before, I, I've got one more question for you, Lynn, and uh, mm. uh, before we wrap it up. But, you know, as, uh, as always, uh, our good buddies and Nicole, uh, who's been supporting us all this time, you know, we, we love Nicole. It's one of those technology that enables everyone to have personalized learning. Uh, so if you haven't got your own copy of Nicole, go to Nicole.app. But here's a quick 30 second spiel uh, on Nicole, uh, the best uh, learning experience platform out there in this world at this point in time. Welcome back to the final segment of the Rami Show. I'm here with Lynn Casley. And, you know, we for those of you who haven't got Nicole, just go to Nicole.app. That's a site out there and uh, it's practically free. You can you can get access to all, your own personalized learning uh, 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 app. And, uh, you know, I, I think the show has been wow. Uh, you know, we've got <laughs> folks saying, wow. <laughs> so just just great talking to you, Lynn. And, you know, one of the things I think it's, a, it's a, and I want to end with this. Um, uh, a sort of uh, a question um, uh, really for younger viewers because many of them are coming out into a very world that you know is uncertain that is uh, volatile that's crazy right I mean you know many of them graduated or, or you know had to use the, they had to go through their final year of university or college in in a in a, in a, in a at home potential you know uh, in, in using a, using a computer or laptop mm. uh, uh, to finish their studies and now they're coming out uh, you know trying to seek employment and they're trying to make sense of everything you know what sort of advice would you give to this young people that are coming out in this world wanting to make a difference wanting to be impactful wanting to do the things that you've done you know uh, to, to make a difference um, but struggling to figure out what it all means and how to even make that impact um, you know uh, what what sort of advice uh, would you would you would you uh, provide to these guys as we close out this show uh, perhaps one of the techniques of a new way of working which is incremental work so instead of expecting everything to happen for you immediately that's that's a really high perfectionist kind of mindset um, to go for incremental uh, improvement and success so your first job role may not be the perfect one that you want but if you do that for a little while it will help you learn some things that will take you to the next step so I think lots of little steps I think we've we've all seen that meme where there's a ladder up against the wall and on one ladder the rungs are a long way apart and the person can't even reach the first rung but on the ladder where the rungs are a lot closer smaller increments they're like whoo straight up that ladder really quickly that's the way to think about your career and what's ahead of you. Lots of little increments. I like that. I like that. And take those little steps. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that be those those become, you know, you've kind of made that journey a, 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 a long journey. So uh, Isudin is downloading the Nicole app. To have fun with that, Isudin. Um, and, and, you know, I, I just, just, to, just to wrap it up, you know, as you, as you look back at all your, your eight books, uh, that you've written, and I think you wanna you're, you're aiming for number nine and number ten. I think like one book a year uh, for ten years, right, Lynn? Uh, you know which is your favorite book uh, of them all, uh, Lynn? Uh, yeah, I gotta ask that. You know, <laughs> which which yeah. do you love the most? Which is your baby? <laughs> I think my baby is Ish. It won a couple of awards, and Ish means somewhat near enough. And if it's uh, it's an approach for us to counteract perfection and make good progress. And that's kind of some of what we've been talking about today. So uh, try and be a bit more ish rather than perfect. So this would be my favourite, uh, my favourite baby. <laughs> and, you know, just as we wrap it up, you know, if you want to contact Lynn, you can uh, always uh, shoot her, uh, you know, go to lynncasley.com and you can check it out. Her LinkedIn profile's out there also. And, you know, Lynn does not just... Uh, uh, 
be on our show. She also does workshops and masterclasses and facilitated conversations and coaching and a whole bunch of, bunch of other things. And, you know, you can always uh, check out Lynn and her profile, lynncasley.com. So Lynn, uh, thank you again for being on this show. Absolute pleasure to have you with us uh, from Melbourne and uh, looking forward to have uh, more of your articles on leeramit.com uh, and also uh, to having you again on our show. And, you know, I think the appropriate way to end is, uh, is a Malaysian word, hey, but uh, Hebat hey, is a Malay word for super, you know, just loved it and uh, nailed it. Uh, so, Neil, thanks. Uh, Lynn, thanks for nailing it. <laughs> and uh, we will see you <laughs> next week, uh, everyone, next Friday, uh, next Thursday, 10 a.m. Uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Beijing time or 12.30 uh, Australian time, I think. Uh, uh, we will see you here on the Lee Ramik show uh, next Thursday. Have a great one, everyone. Have a great weekend. Uh, all the best uh, to each and every one of you. Bye-bye.